right, everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the pineal gland and the effects that uh, water fluoridation has on it, or just fluoride in general. Now, it was brought to my attention by Miss Erin that I left this most important piece of the puzzle out of our last fluoride video. Uh, and she's certainly right, because I think that this is definitely an important uh, connection for people to make. So, what is the pineal gland? Wikipedia tells us that the pineal gland, also known as the pineal body, is a small endocrine gland in the vertebrate brain. It produces melatonin, a serotonin-derived hormone, which affects the modulation of sleep patterns in both seasonal and circadian rhythms. Its shape resembles a tiny pine cone, hence its name, which we will definitely come back to, and it is located in the epithalamus, near the center of the brain, between the two hemispheres, tucked in a grove where the two halves of the thalamus join. Now, if we hop over to the dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, often referred to as the spirit molecule, Wikipedia page, we'll also find that there's a strong connection between DMT and the pineal gland, such as a 2013 study which found DMT in microdialysate obtained from a rat's pineal gland. So, we have this gland in the brain that produces melatonin, uh, regulates our sleeping patterns, and has a strong connection to DMT, or the spirit molecule, uh, which I think is important because DMT uh, is found in a lot of plant medicines used by ancient cultures to uh, heal the body and reach what they would consider to be the spirit realm. Wikipedia also tells us that from the point of view of biological evolution, the pineal gland represents a kind of atrophied photoreceptor, so this gland in our head um, also shares characteristics with the physical eyeballs uh, which you see that are coming out of the front of your forehead such as rods and cones like that are found in the retina. So it's easy to draw the connection between what Western medicine would call the pineal gland and what ancient cultures for thousands of years have referred to as the third eye. Philosopher René Descartes regarded the pineal gland as the principal seat of the soul and the place in which all our thoughts are formed. So we see the importance of the pineal gland or the third eye, and we're also beginning to see symbolism that brings us back to the shape of the pineal gland, the pine cone like we spoke about earlier, um, that's used by groups of what you might call elite around the world, like you'll see here in the Vatican uh, or on the Pope's staff. Just a couple of things to make you think. So we went over the effects of fluoride a little bit in our last video, but just as a little recap, I wanted to show you guys this infographic here, which shows uh, dental fluorosis rates in the United States dating from 1950 through 2004. Now, one thing that you'll definitely have to pay attention to is that 1950 is right after most of the United States began uh, fluoridation of their water. So definitely an interesting statistic here. Now, what the Fluoride Action Network tells us about the pineal gland and the effects of water fluoridation on the pineal gland is uh, pretty startling, so I'll go ahead and read you guys this here. In the 1980s, a British scientist, Jennifer Luke, discovered that fluoride accumulates strikingly high levels in the pineal gland. Now, we know that the pineal gland also produces melatonin, and the Fluoride Action Network here tells us that melatonin maintains a body's circadian rhythm, the sleep-wake cycle, regulates the onset of puberty in females, and helps protect the body from cell damage caused by free radicals. While it is not yet known if fluoride accumulation affects pineal gland function, preliminary animal experience found that fluoride reduced melatonin levels and shortened time to puberty. Based on this and other evidence, the National Research Council has stated that, quote, fluoride is likely to cause decreased melatonin production and to have other effects on normal pineal function, which in turn could contribute to a variety of effects in humans, unquote. The pineal gland has highest levels of fluoride in the body. As a calcifying tissue that is exposed to a high volume of blood flow, the pineal gland is a major target for fluoride accumulation in humans. In fact, the calcified parts of the pineal gland contain the highest fluoride concentrations in the human body. Although the soft tissue of the pineal does not accumulate fluoride to the same extent as the calcified part, it does contain higher levels of fluoride than found in other types of soft tissue in the body. While the impacts of these fluoride concentrations in the pineal are not yet fully understood, Studies have found that calcified deposits in the pineal are associated with decreased numbers in functional pinealocytes and reduced melatonin production, as well as impairments in the sleep-wake cycle. 
So what I hope to have accomplished with this video is at least give you guys a little bit of a tidbit here that will hopefully send you on your own path of research, um, much like the last one, so that you can decide for yourself whether or not this is something that you want to be doing to your body. As before, all applicable links, everything in the video will be available below the video wherever you're watching it, whether that's on vibeandhire.com or on YouTube primarily. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to, uh, if not teach you guys a couple things, at least point you in the right direction. And as always, keep your eyes peeled to vibeandhire.com and the Vibe and Hire podcast for reporting very similar to this. Peace.